Psalm 127, Psalm 127 and 1. We're talking about getting and keeping a good foundation for your marriage, for your marriage. The first scripture we had was Amos 3 and 3. The question was asked, can two walk together except they be in agreement? Can two people journey in their life together as one except they be in agreement? And the answer is, uh, if you're not in agreement, you're not going to be able to walk together. So you have to be in agreement. You have to be willing, the two of you, to work on your marriage. It takes two to make a marriage, not one. One person can't be working on a marriage and the other not. It's because that's not agreement. Okay? Amen. Amen. So here in Psalm 127 Amen. and 1, if you could read that, sister. Okay. Let's see. Um, Psalms 127 and 1 reads, Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Okay, it says, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, they labor in vain that build it. So if you're trying to have a good marriage without the Lord Jesus Christ, your work is in vain. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is a strong foundation so yeah. let's go to Matthew 7 and let's look at that foundation and we talk about when we talk about building house uh brother David brother and sister Davis we're talking about building a life or building a marriage Amen. you you both of y'all are trying to build a marriage praise God if go if, if Jesus is not the head of it it's not gonna work but if he is it will work now Matthew 7 24 and 25 talks about a wise man that builds his house on a strong foundation. And that strong foundation you're talking about is Jesus. It says, therefore, now this is Jesus speaking in Matthew 7, 24. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine, talking about this word of God, and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock his house, his marriage, his life. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So every marriage, let me come off the PowerPoint for a minute on this one. Every marriage is going to have issues. Hey, if you ain't already had them, get ready for some. <laughs> You're going to have some issues. But if you build your marriage, which is your house, upon the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the rock, the rain's going to come, the flood going to come, the wind's going to blow, and your house going to be built. Your marriage, the devil going to beat upon that marriage. But if you build it on Jesus and what he says, it won't fall. It won't fall because you made Jesus Christ the head of it. But here in 26 and 27, it gives you the other uh, way you can go. And every man that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man Jesus. which built his house upon the sand. Amen. And the rains descended, the floods came, the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So when you build your house upon the sand, you're building your house upon human, humanness, you know, your feelings and all that. So Jesus gives us a set of rules, not just as a married people, but individual people on how to build your, your rock. And he says, if you hear these sayings, he's talking about from Genesis to Revelation. If you hear this and do it, then you have built your life, your marriage, your house, your job, whatever it is you want to build your business on a solid foundation. You're still going to get the issues of life. The rain going to come, the wind going to blow, the floods going to come, and it's going to beat up on your life. But as long as it's built on what Jesus Christ says to do, it will not fall, which means it will stand. And you'll stay married and have a good marriage until y'all leave here from this earth, okay? So just make sure that Jesus Christ is the head of your life. Amen. So we're going to go back to that PowerPoint. Thank you, Lord. Baby, and, did you understand everything she said? Yes. Okay. Amen. And also, um, 
because this is recorded, and I'm, I'm going to make it a video on this, you can go back over it and over it again. Oh, I love that. Yeah, talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so here, um, so that's Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Now here in Ecclesiastes 4, I'm going to ask your wife to, to uh, read that. Okay. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, and then I'm going to ask Brother Davies, he's okay with reading English, mm -hmm. to read Matthew 18 when we get to it. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Okay. See, everything that you see that I'm giving you as a minister of the gospel is the word of God. This is the foundation. This is the rock. I love it. That's why he left this for us. Okay. E um, are you there, babe? E Ecclesiastes? Yes, I'm here. That was fast. I'm here. Praise God. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm waiting on Pastor. Rene. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And 9 reads, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. So here you have, again, agreement and two. The Bible says that two are better than one. When you get married, the two of you become one. You're supposed to be agreed. You're, you're going in this life together. You're going forward in this life together. It says it's better, two are better than one, because if one falls, the other will lift him up, not beat him down because he fell down. Yeah. If he... Uh, and if he falls, the other will help him. Amen. Amen. Together, you Amen. alone you might be cold, but together you have heat. And if one come against y'all, then the two of you together can fight an enemy. And a, now here's what we're trying to get to. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. So now we talk about three. We already talked about two. That's the husband and wife. And then the third one is Jesus Christ. If he is part of your threefold cord, then it, it can't, I mean, it don't matter what come against your marriage. If Jesus is ahead, if he's that third man in your marriage, mm -hmm. then it, oh, they might try, but it ain't going to be easy for them. Amen? Amen. So a threefold cord is not you and your wife and relatives. It's not you and your wife and a pastor is not is only you, your wife, and Jesus. That's the threefold cord that he's talking about. Now let's look at that in Matthew 18. And, and, and did you understand that, Brother Davies? Yes, Brother Davies? I understand. Right. Um, no, my line. No, the line is tripping. Your phone uh, is tripping. I'm able to. Uh, so now Matt, Matthew yeah. 18, I'm gonna ask well, you to read one. that. Well, anyways, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, baby. If you can read Matthew 18, 19. Matthew, Matthew 18, 19. Through 20. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Matthew 18. Um, at the same time, no. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter okay, eighteen. Okay. Matthew chapter eighteen, verse nineteen. Is that what you have? You may have a different version. Verse nineteen. Matthew eighteen, verse nineteen to twenty. Say again. I said unto you. Yes. Are we the same page? Are we the same page? Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, all right, good. Uh, thank you. Again, I said unto you, 
that if two of you shall agree on earth and touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them for my Father which is in heaven. 20. Hello? Yes, and now 20. For we are together. Then I am in in the in the midst of it. Amen. Now here Jesus is again said, he said, again, I say unto you that if two of you mm -hmm. shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. For them of my father, which is in heaven. Me, two of you. See, there's the two of you. Husband and wife. Can two walk together except they be in agreement? You have to agree. You have to take things to God. And then he says, uh, for where two or uh, three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of you. So it's the two of you and that threefold cord, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get your prayers answered. You go together in agreement to the Father, asking anything in his name. But the key is agreement. Mm -hmm. There's power in agreement. So y'all have agreed that you, the two of you want your marriage. The two of you want to work on your marriage, right? That's what the agreement is today? Yes. Right? That the two of you want yes. to work on your marriage. And I'm yes. on the, the thing. Well, then... You just, I'm glad that you take that before God. You touch and agree that you are to work on your marriage. Amen. And he's agreeing with you to help you work on your marriage. So that's a good beginning. Amen. So we have one more slide to look at. Let me see here. Let me find the PowerPoint. One more uh, slide to look at. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I got a lot of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This one we don't want. That's where it died now. Died later. <laughs> Lord, Amen. And that's it. That's getting ready for the Antichrist. So here's the thing here, brother. A marriage is between two people. This is something that every it's marriage needs to understand. A successful marriage knows this. People that's been married for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, mm -hmm. they know this, that a marriage is between two people. So we can go to Genesis 2, 24. No, understanding that, you keep other people out of your marriage. Amen. And that's what Amen. a marriage is. Keep other people I'm guilty of that. out of your marriage. Especially, I've seen this. This is a... <laughs> A grievous sin. Married women that, that, that got single women trying to tell them what to do by they marriage. Mm -hmm. What do they know? Most of them are jealous and don't want to see nobody married. So, but you got to keep other people out except for periodic godly counsel, which is what y'all getting now. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is giving y'all a foundation so that y'all can know what a marriage is and work on it. Amen. Amen. So Genesis 2, 24. Amen. And uh, you go ahead and read it, uh, Brother Davey, since it's talking about a man, what a man's supposed to do. All right. Amen. All right. All right. <clears throat> Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall clear unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. A man shall leave his father, his mother, his sister, his brothers, his exes, his those that try to get into business, anybody trying to get in your business, leave them and cleave to your wife. You join together. Cleaving means you have joined mm -hmm. together. It's just two. A marriage is okay, between yeah. mm -hmm. two people. Everything that you depended upon, let me come off, this is for both of y'all. Everything you depended you, upon 
when you was with your mother and father, now the two of y'all depend upon each other for. Okay? So it's no longer, uh, the, the marriage is not between the two of you and anybody else. A marriage is two people. And that's what people have that's to true. understand. And that doesn't mean that people that are well-meaning can't speak into your life. That just, un just understand what this marriage is between. It's between the two of you. And the devil will fight that. He'll be, he'll be trying to tell people what you supposed to do about your marriage. And I'm telling you from the word of God that a marriage is between one. The Bible says right from the beginning, a man shall leave, leave, leave and cleave to his wife. Amen. So y'all have become one and it's really yeah. y'all against the world. <laughs> with Jesus Christ as the head, as the third. There's only one, supposed to be three people in y'all marriage, that's the two of y'all and Jesus, period. Because unless the Lord build the house, y'all build it in vain. So uh, how does he build it? He builds it with his word. He tells you what to do. And all y'all have to do is do it. Understand the principles and do it. Amen, apply it. And so that that's one thing that people have to understand. That this marriage, ain't nobody can work that out but y'all. Y'all, but you gotta have some tools to work it out. Amen. 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 So Proverbs 18, 22, you probably he already seen that one. He that finds a wife. Yeah, we was talking about it was in the book class this morning. Okay, finds a good thing. Not only find a good thing, but he gets I'm God's favor. He finds a good thing. And he get, and I'll have you read that, brother. I'm gonna have sister read. Proverbs 31. He that finds a wife does two things. I'll say good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. Take your time. Hallelujah. Um, which one I should read? Proverbs? 1822. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> say it slower, babe. Okay, okay Proverbs 1822. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty two. Yes, take your time. All right. Thank you, Lord. Two things when you get a wife. Proverbs eighteen twenty two. Also finds a wife, you know. Mm -hmm. Minutes, please. Okay. Yes, that's the right one. Okay. Also founded a wife, you no, know, founded a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. Yes. Two things you get. When you find a wife, not a girlfriend, mm -hmm. not a lover, <laughs> not whatever, who so finds a wife finds number one a good thing. Mm -hmm. And number two, you get favor of the Lord. Favor of the Lord. One of the best things you can get in your life is God's favor. Mm -hmm. So you're already favored. And then you'll understand that by and by. Now, in, in Proverbs 31, there's a message for your wife. This is what she's going to do for you. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 to 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I wanted to put you in the game. All right. Uh, Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 12. 10 reads, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. She will do him good. When, when you find a wife, when you find a virtuous woman, which is another word for godly woman, a woman that fears the Lord, she will do you good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, if she mess up, now let me come off. If she mess up and come short of what she's supposed to do, 
everybody got to forgive because that's one thing about marriage. You know, we, we do, we build a house on a foundation, just like our life. We build a house on a foundation and we go forth to do the right thing, but we might sin. So Bible said, if you confess your sin, you got, if you sin, if she sinned against you, if you sin against her, you got to be willing to forgive and move on. So once you confess it, mm -hmm. he's faithful. You talk about it. You talk about this thing mm -hmm. he, and confess it. Confess your faults, your sins, one to another. Not so you can beat each other down, but confess it so you can get it under the blood of Jesus. Then y'all can walk together. Agreed. So the Bible in 1 John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sin, see, doing something, holding it back and lying about it, ain't no confession. Okay. So there's no blessing in there. There's no, no, no favor. But if you confess it, then God is faithful and just to forgive you. And here's the biggie, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So when you are no longer unrighteous in your sin and God cleanses you with his blood, you can keep walking in righteousness. You can keep going forward in your journey together. Amen. So never forget that. Don't let sin get in between y'all marriage because God has given you a way to clean that up. Amen. And then, as, as the Lord said, sin no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, sin no more. Amen. So make a, 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 a point to be uh, faithful and loyal and committed to each other and to your marriage. Amen. That is a biggie. To be faithful and loyal and committed to your marriage. But if you sin, confess it and uh, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so uh, she will do him good and not evil all the days of life. That's one of the things about having a, 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 a wife, a godly wife, a virtuous wife, Brother Davies. Your wife your godly wife, a virtuous woman, will do you good and not evil all the days of life. You can have a girlfriend out there that might do you good for a day uh, or whatever, uh, but your wife going to do you good all the days of your life. If you sin against her, she going to get down on her knees and uh, uh, pray for you and for herself. If you fall, she going to lift you up. They got some folk out there. If you fall, they're going to kick you while you're down. <laughs> so a virtuous woman. And this is what these women need to understand. If your husband do something against you, you're not supposed to render evil back. You're supposed to pray for him. You're supposed to be his greatest cheerleader. Yeah. There's not a woman on earth. Let me come off and say this. <laughs> There's not a woman on earth, uh, Sister Davies, that's supposed to be a, a greater cheerleader for your husband than you. Amen. My husband, this, my husband. If you're going to brag, boast about he's a good husband. Don't go out, and, and another thing, don't go out there telling people about what y'all are doing. Uh, uh, just keep people out your marriage. This is y'all's marriage. A marriage consists of two people and God. So three, four, four. That's y'all's marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Work together in your marriage. One of the worst things I've, I've heard of people, I've seen this actually. Somebody go out there and talk about what they husband or wife do in bed. And, and and the next day, you know, that person trying to get with their husband or wife. See, that's called that's what they call private life. Amen. Yeah. That's all private. That's between a husband yeah. and a wife. Yeah. Y'all finances, y'all yeah. children, yeah. y'all what going in y'all household. Yeah. Everything is between the two of you. Okay. Except if you need periodic counsel, godly counsel, which is what you're giving getting today. I'm giving you a foundation for a good, successful marriage. Amen. So praise God. Hallelujah. So mm. let's go back. Whoops, mm. I went to the wrong one. <laughs> That's a good one, though. <laughs> and we're going to finish this up, and then we can have some questions and talk about this. Now, Ephesians 5 gives you some uh, foundations for how husband and wife are supposed to act toward each other. Ephesians 5. 22 and 23. And I'll go ahead and read that for y'all. Ephesians 5, 22 and 23. 
22 and 23. Well, it says 333. Well, we're just going to do 22. Yeah, yeah. 22 through 23. That's a, okay. a typical typographical error. Okay. <laughs> so it's 22 to uh, 522. Well, no, it is 33. It's 33. Oh, okay. I spoke it, but it's 22 to 3. It's, it's like it is on there. Okay. So it says here, it starts out with wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord, your own husbands. Then it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Then it says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, a husband's supposed to sacrifice for his wife, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause, here we go back to Genesis, shall a man leave his mother and father and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Now, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you, here's the thing, talk about the man in particular, love his wife even as he loves himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So in a marriage, the husband is the head of the wife. But the husband is, Christ is supposed to be the head of the husband. See, because if a, a hus if Christ is leading, if Christ is the head of a husband, all that the husband is going to do is love and cherish his wife. He's going to sacrifice for her. He's going to work for her. He's going to make sure she's got everything she needs. Now, it's easy for a wife to submit to a husband like that. But if a husband is beaten down and abused and all that, I'm going to tell you, it's hard <laughs> to submit to a husband like that. So, you, you both have your part right here in Ephesians 5. And that is the husband is to love his wife. And the wife is to reverence her husband. Reverence means respect. You are to respect him. If somebody was to ever come to your ears and talk about, uh, I seen him do, you stopped him right there. Don't you tell me nothing about what you seen my husband do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't receive it. Do not receive that. That is the devil trying to put something in your marriage. This marriage is between two people. Y'all mm -hmm. work it out together. Now, this is the foundation right there. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, submit to your husbands. He is the head. He's the final head. That doesn't mean that everything uh, you have the final. It don't mean you have the final say on everything. I'm going to tell you, Brother Davis, because you understand now uh, when two are working together, she may be the smarter one in the finances than you. So, so, let's just say she can balance the budget way better than you, okay? But you want to handle the money and y'all end up homeless because you could have the money. Now, what sense is that? That doesn't make sense. You, you got to sit down with each other and say, now, look, you know, uh, uh, you're the better at, at the finances, you know? So you go on ahead and do that. So uh, you have to use common sense. You know when you when you're doing this, but that's what y'all worked it out together, okay? Uh, if if somebody has a gambling problem, they ain't the one that can handle the finances in the house, because <laughs> again, you're gonna end up homeless. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's just the way. It, I I actually know people, beautiful people that love each other, been married a long time, got children, but the husband cannot. He he doesn't have a head for the finances, and the woman loves him and and she uses this uh, uh uh submit to your husband and he just keeps them homeless 
See, there's something wrong with that. See, if Christ is your head, because remember, you're her head, but Christ is your head. So when Christ is your head, you do what Christ say. And Christ is never going to have you put gambling or anything else above your wife. You are to provide for her, to help her, to nourish her, and she is to respect you. That means that she's not going to receive nothing negative from nobody about you, and the vice versa. You don't receive nothing negative because that's your wife, and that's, wait a minute, I got it backwards. Your wife <laughs> and your husband, <laughs> amen, and y'all's marriage. So understand that. And I love, let's go back. I want to show y'all something really uh, great. Now, we're not, when we're talking about this, we're not talking about abuse. Nobody's going to submit to abuse. The Lord don't want nobody to submit to abuse. I'm telling you that now. But uh, uh, husband, we have to, as wives, we have to submit to our husband. That means respect. And here in Ephesians 5, I want to point out something to you. 5 and 22. It says, wives, submit unto your own husbands. Now, I have seen a thing that is vanity. Oops, I don't think it's the brother sees that. I'm sorry, Brother Davies. You can't see that. Let me put it, let me get it up there where you can see it. I have seen, when I say vanity, I mean something that ain't right. A, 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 a vain thing in the world. Now you can see it. Here it says, submit to your own husband. Yeah. You cannot put your pastor over your husband. Because the Bible says. Yes, I'm glad we hear that. <laughs> the Bible says, submit to your own husband. Right. You, you have one husband. Uh -huh. You may have a pastor, but you have one husband. Yeah. So that's who you submit to. Now, if he's abusing you and dogging you out and beat you up and, and they trying to help you come from enough, uh, among abuse, then, you know, that's when the submission. But, you know, when you're trying to work something out with your husband, mm -hmm. it's between you and your husband and God. Now, there is a time to get godly counsel. Okay, and that's when you try to work it out and you just need a little help on a little particular area. You just need a little bit of help on this, like this forgiveness thing or this whatever thing or whatever thing. Yeah. But you're supposed to submit to your own husband, not somebody else's husband that's smarter than your husband. Your husband. Amen. Amen. And so that's why we ought to marry smart men. Because if I got to admit, submit to my own husband, he better be smart. <laughs> but either way it go, <laughs> submit to your own husband. So bottom line, uh, God bless y'all. I'm glad that you're working on your marriage, but understand that a marriage is between two people and it takes two people to work on it. Um, there's no such thing as I'm working on the marriage. I'm working on it, but he ain't. Or I'm working on the marriage and I'm working hard on it, but she ain't. Can two walk together Except they be agreed. And the answer is no. If you're not agreed and working together, it's not going to work. If Christ is not the head, it's not going to work. Amen. So it's your marriage. And again, a marriage. And, and the, the, the really the bottom line thing I want to, to for y'all to understand today is that a marriage is between two people. It's not you and her and them. It's two people. Amen. Amen. So that's why God told Amen. you to leave and cleave. Amen. Amen. So that's it. That's the bottom line, what I want to get out of this. Now I'm going to stop the recording so that y'all can talk. We can talk some person that we don't want recorded because I'm going to put this on YouTube for you to go over and over. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me stop the recording. Okay.